All right, we're up. So this is kind of a uh, doggy school, day school, uh, puppy success, behavioral predictions, and some confidence building stuff is what we're gonna talk about here. Um, we kind of talked and chat a little bit about what the hell do we talk about? So <laughs> there's so much that Derek and I could talk about, but uh, this is Derek Beckelman, guys. Um, Derek's a friend of mine, been a friend of mine for several months, about a year, I guess. I was going to say, I think it's about a year. Yeah. Um, Derek did four years in the Air Force and got out after his contract. Um, then after that, went to dog training school and graduated. I believe you used your GI Bill on that, correct? Oh, yeah. Nice. So <laughs> um, we're not going to get into that on here but if anybody sees this and is interested, hit me up and I will point you in the right direction with that. Um, after that, you started your own business with your, with your brother, Green Dog Academy. Um, and your brother is also a dog trainer. Um, yeah. Rocked on with Green Dog Academy for a while. And then you got invited to uh, interview and put in an application to become an instructor back at a dog training school, which you did. And you got, um, <laughs> Derek is not the lead instructor, which I wanted to say, but he is one of the most favorite instructors out there because I've talked that's to what him I hear. and, uh, that's why I wanted to say lead instructor, but no, he's not, <laughs> he is definitely one of the most favorite instructors out there. Um, Real quick, after Green Dog Academy, your brother rolled off and started his own company, uh, Pet Care MD. Um, yep. He sells like CBD stuff for dogs out of Canada, um, which Derek has given me samples I've used on my dog. Um, great stuff. I did see a difference, definitely. Um, we'll, we'll get into that. We'll circle back to that. Um, yep. So... I just wanted to say real quick, one of the things uh, early on in our meeting relationship, I can't remember if it was at a trial or at a club, but trial. In you, Bertram, I believe. We, yeah, we, we met at the trial, but there was, I, I can't remember if it was there. You were talking about getting your treadmill, your dog treadmill. Um, we were kind of back and forth on that. And I was giving you information for like J Jack and things like that. And you told me, um, I really don't want to watch a lot of that because I want to be able to uh, come up with my own ideas and my own ways of using a treadmill for techniques and stuff or dog training. And I was like, that's, I already <laughs> liked you, but that was the moment that I was like, this dude, this dude right here. Yeah. Yeah, that that was it for me. I mean, like when it when it comes down to it, you know, when you start watching a lot of people's stuff and you know, you start going, Okay, I know this person did this and this person did this and this person did it, blah, 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 blah. And then you're like, I'm gonna go with this person's like technique or method or whatever. I mean, really you kind of handicap yourself to a certain extent because now you're not really thinking about it from a creative aspect you know you're thinking about okay am i following each and every step that this person told me to do right. where if you have that general basis of knowledge to work off of i mean honestly you can kind of come up with maybe even you know sometimes better techniques overall yeah. um you know something i did with my uh with my puppy dick <laughs> when I started him on the slap mill, I basically went, all right, dude, like we're like, I'm not going to give you any feedback. I'm not going to reward you every time you start moving unless I tell you to. So if he started running, I would just stand there. I would just look at him and he knows or he knew like initially when we started, if he gets on there, like he's going to get fed. Right. And I would just look at him and be like, I don't know what you're doing, dude. And then when he would stop and he would be motionless, I would click and reward him. And then while he was still stationary, click, reward, click, reward. And then I would start telling him, you know, to go forward, go backward, move. Nice. But, um, you know, that was just one of those things where I was like, you know what? 
if you know if i end up doing grc with this dude mm -hmm. you know game what is it game this relationship control uh -huh. um you know, if I ended up doing that with him, like, I want him to know when you get up there, don't move until he tell you to. Right, right. Yeah. You know, and then, you know, there's still times where I'll, you know, just tell him free. And if he wants to run, he can run. Or if he wants to stay, you know, whatever. But, right. yeah. So, real quick, GRC, for people that don't know, because these are pet dog people, it's a it's a sport. Um, it, it was created by J-Jack, a, a dog trainer up in New York. Nope, he's in Maine. Maine. I see you representing. Um, yeah, he had pet dog people and had to figure out how do I get these people to be better on their obedience stuff. So he started putting games and rewards and certificates to it and basically just developed his game. And any dog can participate in GRC, like any dog. Mm -hmm. Um not only for the obedience piece, but there's a sport piece and he has enough sports implemented in GRC that practically any dog can do this. Um, yeah. So cool stuff. I mean, we won't get hung up on that. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I love GRC. I love the concept. I love the idea. I'm, I'm actually looking into some of that uh, for my people. Yeah, I mean, along and, that line. and Jay is awesome. Great yeah. dude. Yeah. Um, you know, I was fortunate enough that being from Maine, I hit him up last year when I went home for Christmas, asked if I could swing by and watch a couple of his club meetings. And he was more than happy to have me. Wow. And he even, yeah, he even stayed after and answered any and every question that I had about it. Um, I mean, it was great. It was awesome. I learned a whole bunch. There are two hours, actually, three hours. <laughs> I mean... Yeah. I was like, I don't know how much time you have, dude, but <laughs> I actually nice. give a lecture on it now at uh, the place I teach. So it's, cool, it's cool. awesome. I really like it. Awesome. Anyways. <laughs> um, we'll get back to the teaching part. I, I do want to talk to you about that um, mm -hmm. because I don't know if you know this, but I was a teacher at one point as well. So we'll oh. open up. Yeah, on that. I pay attention to our conversation, so I do remember for that. <laughs> nice. Um, so Green Dog Academy. Uh, let's tell me about Green Dog Academy. Tell me about your days owning your business, dog training, what you had. So basically, I ended up getting into dog training because of my little brother. Uh, he found the school that we both went to. And, you know, one day, I was working on a boat. I had him help me out. And he was like, yeah, I'm going to the school to learn how to train dogs for a living. I was like, well, what, what do you, what do you mean? That's an option. And he told me about it and I, you know, followed right after him. So he went one class. I went to class after, um, once I graduated, I worked at a daycare for a little while. I want to say six to eight months. And then I was kind of like, you know what? I just, I feel like we could do more. Like, I feel like there's something better for dogs that we could mm -hmm. be doing. And uh, my brother was training, you know, on his own. Uh, I was working there and I was like, dude, you know what? We're going to start a business. And uh, kind of came up with uh, basically like the groundwork for what we call the day school. And basically what we did is we would take 10 dogs a day, max 10 dogs a day. Um, both of us are certified trainers. So, we would work the dogs, you know, throughout the day. Uh, we worked them separately and we would teach them basically obedience, manners. Uh, we would teach them how to play with toys. Uh, we, you know, basically worked on anything that their owners wanted. Um, it was a lot of fun, but it was a lot of hard work. You know, we were on the go constantly right. and, um, you know, running, running your own dog training business. I mean, it's like sports to 16 hour days you know every day yeah. so yeah. it was intense it was a lot of fun i mean we worked with i want to say it was somewhere around 250 dogs within like two years um it was great because a lot of people would bring their dogs either two or three days a week sometimes maybe even more than that uh and so basically when the dog would come we would know right where they're at we would know how to progress forward and because we, my brother and I went to the same school, we had basically like the same 
ideology and mentality Methods. when it came to training. Yeah. Yep. Everything, you know, it was a very flawless transition between us. And one of us could pick up right where the other left off. You know, I was going to ask, did, did you said, you know, 10 dogs max. So like, did you train five and he trained five and those were, or did you intermingle dogs? And that's nice. We trained, we trained all 10. Um, we would basically do a session with each of them um, kind of separately, nice. but depending on the dog's level of obedience, mm -hmm. you know, if they've been coming for a while, they've been coming regularly. We knew their obedience is really good. Then we could start working multiple dogs at the same time. We would start working them outside in the same vicinity, you know, all that different type of stuff. So, I mean, it was, it was great. It was a lot of fun. We kept the dogs crated throughout the day when we weren't working with them. So not only were they getting a lot of obedience training, they were also getting a lot of crate training, which I think uh, is very undervalued by the average pet owner. You know, a lot of people want to I get agree. the crate at like four months old. And I'm like, well, <laughs> what yeah. do you mean? Like, you know, your dog doesn't understand what's going on in the world yet. You can't just leave them loose. Right. Oh, well, they're fine. They didn't chew up anything. I'm like, that's, no, I have a room I put them in. <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> I mean, there's a way to go about giving them more privileges so they get used to being alone in the house. But I mean, you know, four right. or six months old, like that, that's too young. Yeah. It just is. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. I love crates. I still use crates. I got a four and a half year old dog. He's crated right now. Uh, my seven year, my seven year old dog still uses crates all the time. So yeah, I'm a very, wonderful. very big fan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I I've had, I've, I've posted video before I, I can leave, I'll leave my crates open and I'll walk in and my female will just be laying in her crate. She'll just go get in it with the door wide open. It is their space and they understand. Yes. I, I, I love it. I love crate training. Mm -hmm. Um, we talked a little bit about puppies and building puppies up for success. Um, I love having so much fun. training. Uh, I love having <laughs> training. Um, and that's also where the confidence building comes in, in my opinion, because, you know, you've got that what eight to 16 week window for 16. socialization. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. 16. No. 16. Yeah. Yeah. 16. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, usually you got that window and if you don't get it done properly, there's some problems there. Um, and both of us are big and love confidence building. And when I get a puppy mm. in, I tend to do more confidence building than actual obedience at that point. Because if, in my opinion, if you have a confident dog that isn't afraid of anything in the world, that can go anywhere and experience anything and be totally happy with himself, obedience is gonna be a breeze at that point. Yeah. So tell me about bringing puppies in. Uh, your pup, you said you had like a puppy success program or you set puppies so up. So we did Puppy Friday. And yeah, that's it. It was so much fun. I mean, we would get, you know, about 10 puppies every mm -hmm. single Friday. Nice. Um, we didn't take dogs who were older than six months at that point because one, we're trying to hit that crucial period of socialization that you were talking about. Mm -hmm. um, and also, you know, the size difference between the puppies because we did do puppy play groups, you know, okay. for sure. sure. We wanted to. We wanted to teach them how to appropriately play with other dogs. And that's very easy to do when they're still very young. Um, and you go, you can also get them, you know, exposed to all these different breeds who are generally the same size. And that way, when those, you know, big breeds like Danes and all those get like way bigger, they already have some experience with those dogs. You know right. I mean? Right. They're not completely um, freaked out. Yeah. So we would basically build a confidence course in our basement where we use, you know, we use that as uh, part of our training area um, because we, we ended up buying a house that had like 7.2 acres and started a business out of our house. So it wasn't out of like a training building or a boarding kennel or anything like that. So we would set up obstacles, you know, nothing that involved like a lot of jumping because you really want to be careful while they're developing and their growth yep. plates and all that yep. stuff. So there wasn't a lot of jumping going on, but I mean, we would have an umbrella set up and we would have food all over the ground, nice. around everything. Nice. So that way, 
you know, the puppy started going, oh man, I really want that piece of food, but it's next to that thing. What if I just sneak in and grab it? Oh, that thing didn't boo. Boo. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, so we would, you know, we have umbrellas around, we would have vacuum cleaners around, brooms, you know, we would have a like snow sled that had a bunch of like plastic bottles in it and there'd be food all on the bottom of that plastic sled. So they had to move the bottles around, get used to them moving, the sounds and balls, um, you know, all thinking, of that. I think enough people have seen me with my kiddie pool full of plastic bottles that I use. Yeah. I mean, it's totally same idea. I think we just yeah. didn't have a kiddie pool at the time. So we just do hey. like a plastic snow sled. You use yeah. what works. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Improvise. I love um, it. We would also, you know, take them out one at a time and we would dress up in clothes that were out of season. Mm -hmm. So if it was the summertime, then, you know, one of us would come in with a big old puffy jacket on, a winter hat, you know, snow nice. pants, boots, nice. all of that, because, you know, living in Maine, they're going to see that. Right. <laughs> and, you know, before they get out of that crucial period, we wanted to make sure they saw it before then. Awesome. So then... Yeah. Yep. So then once wintertime rolled around, they're already like, oh, dude, I remember somebody, you know, freaked me out wearing one of those, but it ended up being that guy I already knew. Yeah. So, I mean, it was, we basically just did everything we could that would set them up for success later on in life and try to think about all these little things that an average pet owner is not going to think of. Yeah. Like an umbrella. You know, how many people think to introduce the dog to an umbrella before they just go, oh, it's raining outside. Boop. And the puppy goes, what in the heck? Yeah. You know what I mean? It just like yeah. kind of shuts down because it's never seen anything like that over its head before. Yeah, same lines. I bought a fan, like a, a big, powerful box fan for my house because I'll take dogs or puppies to like tractor supply, Jeebos, and they'll have those fans set up at the summer, just running full blast for oh, people's yeah. eyes so you can see how powerful they are. You walk a dog past there the first time and they're like, what in the yeah so i love working dogs around fans and just building them to where they can just lay in front of it and eat food right in front of it and it doesn't take long usually but that's a big one uh but umbrellas yeah. are big yeah yeah i mean you know everyday things they would use to clean your house that yeah. you know a lot of dogs end up being afraid of and that Back typically in stems from yeah you know that initial that experience. experience being like yeah. oh my god Oh and my God, what is that? Run and it goes away. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I scared the dog when we put this away. And like, you know, I completely understand that reaction because Absolutely. I would have done the same exact thing. Yeah, without knowledge. Why I went to dog yeah. training school, 100% yeah. would have done the same thing. Oh my God, thing. poor baby, come here. Yeah. I didn't mm -hmm. mean to scare you. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So, you know, we just basically tried to think outside the box, go, what are these puppies going to be exposed to eventually? that their owners aren't going to think about until they just spring it on the puppy. Right. And the puppy go, Oh my gosh, you know, how can we help these dogs get better at that? You know, rain jackets, uh, like anything, anything we could think of, we did. Right. So it was a lot of fun because I mean, one who doesn't like playing with puppies all day, every day, yeah. you know, two, we're setting them up for success by introducing them to all these things. Three, they're doing great training. Yeah, but a lot Excellent. of times, right? We're yeah. you know we're the ones who are dealing with these puppies screaming to yeah. get out of their crate, and then it not working. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, we also were able to kind of figure out, you know, how much food and water it took before this puppy needs to go to the bathroom, and yeah. that way we could guide their owners better who were trying to figure out their potty schedule. Yep. So. That's you know, we still major for me. One of the major things I do on board and trains is schedule, 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 schedule. Everything is down. I mean, pinpoint. So when their parents, their owners pick them up, I can be like, this is when I feed. This is how I feed. This is how much. This is when they get water. This is what time they go to the bathroom. This is when they poo. This is when they pee. Like, I love being able to give people that information, um, mm -hmm. whether they take it or not but I love having that. And that, that's major to a dog. Scheduling to a dog is a major, major thing. Yeah, they mm -hmm. thrive off of it. They do, they do. But, you know, sometimes with certain dogs, I would like 
actively not keep a schedule. Really? Just so that way they wouldn't like flip out and be like, buddy, do you know what time <laughs> it is? And yeah. I'm like, yeah, it's me time. Yeah. That's what time it is, but you can wait. <laughs> I'm with you there. But a lot, I'm with you there. You know, a lot of times those are the dogs that have kind of like, you know, hostily taken over the house. Sure. Yeah. You know what I mean? Where it's like, yeah. whoa, 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 you actually don't run the show. And we're going to show you how that kind of works now. <laughs> yeah. So I have the benefit. I still work eight to five at a day job. So most people generally eight to five. So my schedule tends to kind of match theirs. Um, mm-hmm. So I can show the dog, like, these are your times you're going to access stuff if you act accordingly. Um, but uh I, I, the ones like you're talking about the hostile take over the house, I usually find with those, they fall in line pretty quick once the kennel's introduced and it's like, no, this is how it's going to be. You're not going to run around my house. They're like, oh, okay. okay. I mean, honestly, from what I saw, like the majority of my client dogs, when I started doing board and trains, a lot of it was the dominance by default. Yep. The dog goes, yeah, I run this show. And then when I go, actually, you don't, I run this show. They were like, oh, thank God. You know, yeah. somebody who knows what's going on, please take the reins. <laughs> and I'm like, perfect. I got you, buddy. All you got to do is sit there. I'm going to tell you exactly what to do. You don't worry about it. Yeah. And they're like, oh. <laughs> they're like, that mailman, like, he's going to kill everyone if you don't watch him. And it's like, yeah. no, dude, trust me, I got it. <laughs> yep. <Yeah. laughs> awesome. Awesome. Uh, so you got pretty good at behavioral predictions, uh, seeing things before they happen, watching uh, behavioral chains take place and stuff like that. Uh, talk about that. So a lot of what I like to do is pick up on dogs' behavior patterns and basically start reading what they're all about. You know, because at the end of the day, if I know who the dog is that I'm working with, then I can help them so much faster because I already know, all right, you're that type of dog that does this, that, and this, and that, and that leads to this. Let's go with the first step. Let's start right there. And we're going to change kind of what you're thinking. Mm -hmm. You know, let's redo that entire kind of behavior sequence you kind of go into. Um, But really it was, it's just, I am, crazy observant when it comes to dogs because I I kind of look at dogs like every single thing you do means something and if I can figure out why you're doing that like what led to that then I can you know either reinforce that behavior with perfect timing Mm -hmm. or I can tell you why you can't do that behavior anymore with perfect timing because I know that this leads to this leads to this. And, um, and a lot of that comes from watching the dog, like the whole time and just going, you know, even if it's just the dog starts sniffing the ground and they sniff one spot, I'm like, what happened in that one spot? You know, because a lot of times it's in my area that I'm working dogs or even, you know, when I'm an instructor at, at school, you know, I know what's been happening in this training building. And so I can go, oh, you know what? There's that dog that peed right there. Or, you know what? There was this female that just went into heat and she sat right in that spot right there. And that's yeah. why you're doing that, which led to this, which led to that. Yeah. Um, you know, even when I'm talking to a student and I'm trying to give them feedback or advice or, you know, kind of tell them how they could change their change their method with this like specific dog because it's not working with this dog but i've seen a dog like this and this is what i did but the whole time i'm looking at the dog like i am not looking at the student at all but i can see out of my peripheral that they're looking at me and then i just point at their dog and they're like what and then they look down and their dog broke a command and i'm like you need to watch your dog like don't look at me I understand you want to look at me because it's respectful and blah, 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 blah. Right. I don't want you to do that. I want you to watch your dog because as soon as their butt gets up, I need you to let them know that that's not acceptable. Um, 
And from just watching dogs all the time, I've kind of learned what specific behaviors lead to specific things. Like, I can't tell you how many times I've told the students, you need to get your dog outside right now because they're about to go to the bathroom. Yeah. And they're like, what? And while they're saying what, their dog starts peeing. And I'm like, yeah. I'm telling you, you just, you got to watch your dog. <laughs> yeah, I love it. We can, we can be out at, at club training and my clients love it because they'll be training and we have a certain area we're training in and we're going to be bringing more dogs out. I don't need dogs defecating and peeing there. So I'm like, if anybody's got to go, send them over there. We'll be training. And I'll be like, oh, you need to grab him and go now. And they're like, what? Mm -hmm. like, yeah, he's fixing to go. Get him off the field. Yeah. <laughs> they love it because I can call it, man. I can mm -hmm. call it, man. Yep. And, and that is from knowing the, you know, what they call pre-eliminating behaviors. Yeah. And, you know, every dog is different to a certain extent, but they're typically generally the same. Yeah. And that it's the same exact like concept that I was talking about where, if you know those behaviors, you've seen them before. Head down, start back go, starts that arching, maybe a little circle turn, get out. <laughs> I mean, even just like, you know, the dog working, you know, getting food all pumped up and then all of a sudden they start sniffing the ground and losing engagement. And I'm like, that dog needs to go to the bathroom. And they're like, what? Yeah. And I'm like, they just ate that final treat yeah. that they went, oh, that's too Ooh. much. Now I got to, I got to go to the bathroom. <laughs> yeah. Like I can see it. Yeah. <laughs> So, I mean, you know, I think a huge, a huge part of what kind of makes me the trainer that I am is kind of how empathetic I am mm -hmm. and the level of empathy that I have for everyone and everything. Cool. Because like, yeah. you know, you know, talking to a client is like, oh my God, this dog is ruining my life. You know, they won't stop jumping on people. And, you know, some people are like jumping. Dude, that's not a big deal. Like we could handle that in like five minutes, but that's yeah. clearly a big deal to that person. Yeah. And I understand because I can think about situations and context where that would not be okay. Yeah. You know, grandma 60... comes walking through the door. Yeah, exactly. Or 67 year old lady that her dog's dragging her down the sidewalk and she just wants to go for a walk with her dog. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And it's like, you know, I, I can see where they're coming from. And so if it's a big deal to you, it's a big deal to me. Right. For sure. Yeah. And, um, you know, and kind of being empathetic to the dogs as well, where you go, you know, I know why you don't want to do that, but trust me, this is why you have to do it. Or yeah. you're not explaining why you're just basically going to do it. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then the dog will eventually see the benefits of doing these things. Yeah. You can't reason with dogs, but you know, just, you know, not necessarily anthropomorphizing and go and like, mm -hmm. oh, well, they're like a human and well, that's yeah. not it. Yeah. But just understanding where they're coming from and why they want to do what they do and not getting on them for trying to be a dog. Sure. Sure. So, so flip side of that, um, I'm empathetic with, I want my dog to jump on me or I want my dog to sit on my lap. And I'm like, that's your dog. Cool. You do totally get it. Want. Yeah. But realize it's a seven week old puppy and it's going to be a six year old dog at some point weighing a hundred pounds. Are you going to be cool with it then? And if the answer is yeah. yes, go for it, go for mm -hmm. it. Yeah. As long as oh, yeah. no underlying, issues of a not with this dog because this dog is already you know a year old and it's showing signs of this and we're already seeing this so you know it's already got some possession issues and a little aggression you probably <laughs> dog sitting on your lap <laughs> it could yeah to you <laughs> you probably don't want this dog on the furniture at all <laughs> <laughs> right yeah for sure for sure uh, um and and honestly, like when we had the day school, you know, I basically with all my clients, they're like, well, I like it when my dog jumps up to me. And I'm like, I get that. I totally do. However, it is, are you going to be consistent enough to let your dog know that you can jump on me when I tell you, but you can't do it when I don't ask you to, because if you can't do that, we can't allow him to jump at all ever. Because yeah. what happens when you come in wearing a suit? Do you really expect your dog to look at you and go, whoa, whoa, whoa. Buddy, you look nice today. today. <laughs> yeah. 
you got your hair gelled. Like, all right, I'm just going to sit and then you can pet me now. They're going right. to go, oh my God, it's my favorite person that's ever lived. Dude, I'm coming in hot. Yeah. <laughs> so like, that was kind of my explanation where it's like, it is completely up to you. We can put this on cue. However, you need to be insanely consistent. Right. It has to be. There's right. no in between because dogs do not understand in between. And yeah. it's not fair for us to ask them to learn the difference. Yep. You know, it's just not. Awesome. So, you know, like you, like you said, dude, I'm, I'm all about like have my dog jump on me, sit in my lap yeah. or whatever. However, with my pet dogs, I have to invite them. Right. My working dog, like that dude is not coming out of the kennel if I'm in a suit. So. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can get there with him though. Like my yeah. dogs are good. They're they're they don't oh, yeah. me. Um and they're they're fine. Kaya, I will invite her up. She likes to get on my shoulders. So I can invite her up on my shoulders. The only thing with her is is as she's gotten older, I've I've had to cut it out. Um you probably saw I posted that she bit me in the face and I love her even more now. It's because I was putting her down and she didn't want to get down and she got overly excited and yeah. what Working dogs get overly excited. Yeah. So they tend to use the mouth. Good. That's <laughs> fine. It's it, I'm totally cool with that. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. it's my dog. Yeah. Don't judge me. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And it and that's what I would tell them. I'm like, it is yeah. your dog. Yeah. Just understand that their favorite person in the world, you, loves it when they jump. So guess what? Yeah. They're gonna just assume that everyone, everyone. loves it yeah. when they jump. Yep. So when grandma comes walking through the door, you better have a plan. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Um, so let's talk about pet care MD. We'll, we'll give your brother some kudos and I'll, I'll try to get a video with him uh, at some point. Wow. There. Uh, I think it still, it still says pet care Canada on it, but that's all right. It's uh it's pet care MD now. And I mean, it is a great product. I was very skeptical of CBD for a long time. Yeah. Um, and to be completely honest, and I'm sure he'll see this at some point, but I was very skeptical of his CBD, you know, at first <laughs> yeah. until I tried it, you know, and once I tried it with my dog, I legitimately saw like positive changes yeah. in all of my dogs. Um, you know, especially my fearful, anxious one. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was like night and day. Yeah, like, you know, we we would get him out to train and he'd be like looking around and like he can still think to a certain extent, but he's not mm-hmm. nearly as focused. And then after giving him some CBD and then training, he's like, what would you like to do? Nice. I will do that as long as you need. <laughs> you know, he was just going and like hanging out on like a place bed on his own, which he like never does. Cool. So, I mean... I definitely saw a lot of positive changes with him. Um, I mean, you should definitely have him on at some point because there's a lot that CBD can do and I don't even understand how it works, okay. but this is his job now. So he knows quite a bit more about it now. <laughs> nice. Yeah. All but, right. Yeah, I'll, I'll give him a shot. We'll get him on. Um, I, I did want to say real quick because we've mentioned several times, uh, the dog training school. So I, I just want to put this out there. The reason we're not saying the name of the dog training school is because that dog training school does not know me. So <laughs> we don't want Derek in any trouble for plugging their name on my channel. And then it come back that I'm not a good guy for some reason. <laughs> um, and he get in trouble with his job, but Hey, it's all good. Um, it is yeah. school. It is a great school. If anybody wants to know about it, hit me up. I'll tell you about it. Um, it's a great school. Uh, teaching. How's that been for you? Do you enjoy teaching? I absolutely love it. I really do. I mean, it's one of those things where the first lecture that I gave, mm-hmm. I had no issues whatsoever. And I thought I was going to be nervous. You know, yeah. I haven't really done a lot of public speaking in the past. Yeah. But I mean, I got up there and I started talking. I mean, it was, it felt completely natural to me. Um, 
I think when you know what you're talking about and a big part of it, <laughs> I, so when I taught, I taught IT work, computer stuff. Okay. I, I actually developed a program from the ground up uh, back in 2005, six, something like that. I went, I went, I left in 08. I know that. So I was there for like three years. So like, yeah, five, six, seven, six, seven, eight, somewhere in there. Completely developed this program from the ground up. It's still there today. I'm really proud of that. Um, awesome. I know what I'm talking about in IT, but I don't have the passion. So uh, I know how much better I can be with dog stuff because the passion's there. With computer stuff, I just know it. Um, mm -hmm. I, I will say, and maybe this applies to you, maybe it doesn't. Um, learning to be a teacher is difficult. Um, learning to teach is difficult. Learning that not everybody learns the same, that can really take you a long way. Different learning styles, different teaching styles, those are major things. I, did, I didn't really believe in it to a certain extent when I first started teaching. I'm like, eh, they're just lazy. They just don't want to apply themselves. <laughs> but when you start changing your structure and see that light bulb on that one student that you're like, what is the deal with this? You know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that to me was very fulfilling. Have you had anything? Oh yeah. Good. Oh yeah. I mean, like when it comes down to it, you're totally right. Like there's so much that goes into being an instructor, like being a teacher mm -hmm. yeah. that I didn't realize, but thankfully uh, where I work, we're required to do continued education, like online stuff. Cool. Um, every year, which is awesome and actually sure. is a fantastic resource awesome. where I thought it was going to be like, oh, man, I got to do this again. Yeah. Oh, it's that time of year. But I've actually learned a lot from it because they have a lot of courses on how to be a better instructor. And, you know, I didn't realize, you know, how much goes into what you're doing with your hands, where you're looking. You know, what you're doing, whether you're moving around, you know, all these little things, you know, I didn't realize played such a big part into it. Um, a lot of it I was kind of doing already without realizing I was doing it. But the more that I kind of learned, I'm, I have started using a lot of the techniques that I've gotten from those continued education things, which has been awesome for me. Cool. Um, but like what you were talking about where, I mean, when the passion is there, dude, it's, it's so easy. Yeah. And you know, from working with so many different clients, you know, when we had our business, um, that's made it very easy for me to teach all the hands-on stuff with our students. And not only that, the amount of students that I've seen in the couple of years that I've been there, you know, not, you know, everyone is different. Everyone is an individual for Absolutely. sure, 100%, yep. but there are similarities. And so you can kind of go, well, you know, I had this one student that was very much like this one. And this is what I did with that person. It worked really well. Let's try that again. Yeah. I mean, to be honest, I found I did that a lot with dogs too. Yeah. It was the same thing. Absolutely. They're all, they're all individuals, but there's a bunch of very similar traits that if you recognize it, you can go, well, Hey, you know what? I tried this with that dog and it didn't work, but this did. Let's try this real quick. Let's, Let's skip that first one that didn't work at all. Let's try this. And if that works great, and if it doesn't, we'll troubleshoot more. Right on. Right on. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. I love it. Yeah, yeah. I, I was thinking the other day, if, if there's one job in IT that I could get back, it would probably be that job. Um, I, I miss mm -hmm. that job. It was challenging. Um, eh. It was a little boring because it's the same curriculum over and over and it's computer crap. It, it changes, you know, throughout the years, you go from XP to 2000 to, you know, but yeah, but it's not, it's not like, Hey, that MacBook is different from that. MacBook. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So there, there was a lot, I, I gained a lot of experience. I grew up a lot, um, there. Uh, yeah. I, 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 I mean, you kind of have to, teaching. especially yeah, yeah. when you're, especially when you're, you're leading an adult. Yeah. 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 You know, because right. you're sometimes you're teaching people who are like twice your age and they paid, you know, it's not like it's yeah. like, so I, for those that don't know, I worked for a junior college. Um, 
<clears throat> so not only is it like it's not high school or elementary where you know you have to be there and you're not paying to be there and it's like oh, i just want to go hang out with my friends mm-hmm. these people put down money and they expect to get something out of it and they expect to walk mm-hmm. away and be able to apply that in the real world um you can't let that down like you've got to be there for them and you have to find a way to get them what they paid for um Mm -hmm. or at least get them to a point they feel like they got it yeah no absolutely absolutely 100 percent dude at the end of the day you know there's only so much you can do (laughs) yeah no you're you're right you're right it a lot of the responsibility does fall back on them for yeah Mm -hmm. yeah but you know it's just like it's just like clients yeah. You know, I can teach your dog all of this stuff, but if you don't do it, the dog is going to go, yeah, I know that guy had those rules. Do you? Yeah. And when you go, what rules? The dog goes, oh, so we're right back to where we started. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I know what to do here. Don't worry. I got this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, and and we know, we see the clients that come in and, and I've had, I've had client, well, I have a client now that's done a fantastic job with his dog. But there was a while where he, they were coming back and he would be like, yeah, we haven't done anything. And I'm like, oh, I can tell. Mm-hmm. And then he, mm-hmm. they got on board and now there's this major change in their dog. One of the biggest things, one of the biggest issues their dog had was reactivity with other dogs. Uh, this dog was attacked at a young age, pretty bad, pretty mm-hmm. beat up with another dog. And just any other dog it came in contact with just bark, lunge, growl at the end of the leash kind of thing. Um, yeah. And last week, we were in a home improvement store with four dogs in a circle, all three or four feet from one another. And that dog was part of that circle and completely fine. Had a new handler come in and he didn't know, let his dog come up face to face with that dog. And I was like, no, no. And he pulled his <laughs> dog, but that dog didn't react at all. And I was like, boom, look at that, man. Like you did that. Like this is what we're looking for. So proud. They were so proud of that moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's oh man. I mean, those type of moments, they really, really get me going. <laughs> yeah, for sure. That th- those are that's what makes you want to keep training. It's not, it's oh, not yeah. I mean, that's what it's, makes the entire job worth it. Yeah. It, it's not to here, take my dog, train my jaw dog, here's some money. It's seeing those improvements. Or you and I have talked about this, um, taking a very stressed anxiety, building a dog up, making a lot of confidence in the mm-hmm. dog, seeing a dog become a dog and then not just a shell of what it was. I get so much satisfaction out of that. Oh my God, man. I mean, like seeing my personal dog Archer from when I first right. got him to now, I mean, I would have had to pay like I would have had to pay thousands upon thousands of dollars to get him anywhere near where he is now if I hadn't gone to dog training school, yeah, and if I hadn't brought him with me, yeah, you know, because there was so much that I did with him to boost his confidence, you know, obedience showing him buddy you don't run this show like i got all of this under control just do what i'm asking you to do and then agility huge huge confidence booster i mean dude Uh i saw that little i saw that little guy go up an a-frame one time and he completely changed yeah like completely it was it blew my mind Cause I had to kind of force him over it. I had to flood him over it. Sure. So I basically had to go, dude, I know this sucks, but you're doing it. Like right. you're going to do it. Got him all the way up over it. He basically <laughs> turned around when, huh? I just caught the mountain. <laughs> dude, he ran back up to the top of it and stood at the top of the A-frame, which was up over my head. I mean, he was at least seven feet in the air or something. And was just standing there, super proud of himself. Nice. And I was like, I was like, you know, I, I didn't mean to let you go back up there because you shouldn't be up there right now, but right. I am unbelievably proud of you right now. Right. Yeah. It's like the swimming pool with the plastic bottles. You have a dog that can't even approach the swimming pool. And by the time you're done, they're jumping in the thing like a kid at a, at a kitty. They're like a ball. wow. Oh. Yeah. They the love it. They love it's it. Awesome. Like you just see their little personalities blossom and they start doing things. So the way I kind of explain it to people 
is it's like someone with low self-esteem that starts working out and they decide like, I love the Spartan races because they're broke out with a short race, a medium race and a long race. And if you get someone that starts kind of working out and decides I'm going to go test myself and they go do the short race, which is like three miles, I think. And they go do it and they go through the obstacles and they finish and they go like, I did that. Like I actually finished like coming in a lot of people, they're not even sure they can finish this thing. They're just out Mm -hmm. there because usually like a friend drug them along or something and they finish and then they get it. Maybe I could do the eight mile race and then Mm -hmm. that maybe I could do the 15 mile race. If I train, maybe I could do that next level. Yeah. Yeah. So Mm -hmm. dogs, I think are the same way. You take them through these, what seem like nothing to people. Like I, I've got a spool, uh, a wooden spool that you spool things yep. up and just getting some dogs to place up on top of that spool. Cause it shakes yep. a little bit like that's major. And then once they're up yep. there and they get comfortable up there, they're like, what else can I do? And these are mm-hmm. dogs that people are like, I can't get the dog to jump in the back of the truck. And you do that. And then you're like, load up and they boom, right in the back of the truck. Yep. They don't even, they're jump. like, ha. Ah. Love to. I would yeah. love to. <laughs> you want me to get in the car after this? I can jump in your car. I just yeah. got on that big scary monster thing and hung out for twenty minutes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. I mean, you know, I did a ton of agility with him, and that actually helped him a lot uh, when he was playing with other dogs. Yeah. Because now he realized, oh, I can like jump up on things. I can jump off things. I can do this. I can do that. I can go through tunnels. Blah blah blah. And he's very social to the point where even sometimes when dogs don't want to be super social, he still <laughs> tries to be. Come and on, you can be my buddy. around and does his thing. Yeah. Um, he's a great little dude. Sweet. But um, we also did like a bunch of quicker tricks. And one other thing that I think, I mean, I don't think I know how boosts his confidence tremendously is we started doing some like nose work and basically using his nose to find like find things. That's cool. I legitimately saw a change in him the, after the second session. Yeah. Like legitimately, I went, whoa, what? You've never done that before. Wow. And the only thing we've done differently is we started doing nose work. Yeah. So like I had heard somebody say that. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, how does that really work? And then I saw it and I went, oh my God, it really does help to boost confidence like crazy. Cool. So, you know, for nice. anybody who's thinking about doing that stuff. Right. Yeah. You've got a fearful dog. I, I want to get more into nose work. I have dabbled with it. Um, I've done the Learberg videos. Uh, Erica Duggan. No, that's not it. The plastic drawers. Yeah. I, Erica Duggan. Is that? Well, that's the trainer's name. Okay. Okay. And that doesn't sound right, but okay. Yeah. Hold on, hold on. Give me two seconds. <laughs> We're gonna product plug here. No, it was a guy. He's ex Air Force. Ah. It's it's a guy, and he's ex Air Force. Um, and he actually takes his baby doggy nose work stuff into like you can use this in real thing. Um, mm-hmm. So I've dabbled in it, but I haven't really got in it. And like you and I have talked, and I'm the kind of person that. If, if I'm going to get into something and actually do something, I'm going to dive in and I want to understand like broad spectrum, really understand before I'm out yeah. saying, Hey, let me, let me train your dog in this and you pay me money for it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I hear you. Um, <laughs> thankfully the school that, you know, I went to and work at, we do that stuff. So I, I had cool. to start doing it. You awesome. know, when I was in school, not really had to, I wanted to anyway, but um, sure, sure. But, you know, I'm exposed to it very often. And, I mean, it's it's a lot of fun. Yeah. It's very, very, very cool to watch the dogs work, to see their changes in body language, to hear their breathing patterns change when they start to get an odor, you know, when they start what they call bracketing, where they, like, narrow their search area down. Um, and, like, the head snap of, like, it's over there. Like, watching that stuff is just awesome it is so cool to watch that is cool that is very cool yeah. I've, I've been to lubbock a few times to help the pd train their canines 
and stuff like yeah. that. Uh, and it's all, I always love watching the dogs work narcotic scents and stuff and track and they've got some phenomenal dogs, some really phenomenal dogs. Um, okay. We have a really good dog here in Snyder, the canine dog. It's a uh, single purpose, just narcotics, cool mouth and wall, a uh, little bit older. I think they're going to look, but he, he's actually really, really good. And I've actually been around other cops with their dogs that have been like, man, that dog's got a nose. Like, <laughs> and he's old. He, he's like, Lucas is like nine years old, eight and a half years old. Still out doing Still killing it, man. Yeah, Still yeah. It. <laughs> for sure, for sure. All right. Well, dude, we've been talking for about an hour, so we've covered a lot of stuff. Didn't really seem like it, but yeah, it has yeah, been about an hour. No. Derek was a little <laughs> worried. He was like, Well, I don't want any uh any silent pauses. So, you know, what are we going to cover? And I'm like, dude, when me and you get to talking, there's not gonna be any silent pauses. <laughs> yeah. You know, I just like to be prepared, but I don't know. I hear you. I hear you. It's I'm like one of those little wind up toys. You get me going. It's it's over. I'm just going to keep going until I run out. Like you're literally going to have to leave. <laughs> no, I <laughs> love it. Talking. I can talk about this stuff for forever and ever and ever mm. and ever. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, but I will tell you, you know, if anybody reaches out about potentially, you know, looking into becoming a professional dog trainer. I mean, you know this for sure, but like you have to be passionate about it. Oh, like, absolutely. Yeah. A hundred percent. If you're not, if you're not that passionate about dogs, you're not all that into it. Like you may not know that you're into it yet. Cause I didn't know until I went to school and I was like, I am really into this. Right. But right. you know, at the same time, like if you're not, if you don't love dogs more than like basically anything, yeah. you probably don't want to be a dog trainer. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's a lot of hard work, rough. and I mean, yeah. yeah, it's a lot of hard work for sure. And chances of you becoming a millionaire off dog training, not very good. Yeah. So you know, if you're if you're all about money in life, maybe training isn't the best path. True. This is true. You know, I'm fortunate enough that I have my career, um, and then this is just my passion, and I have. Mm -hmm. I didn't, I didn't come into dog training, you know, oh, I'm going to be a dog trainer and just start making money off of dog training. I trained for free in the park for a long mm -hmm. time. It's crazy because people reach out to me now and I'm like, yeah, I was training in a park for free for like three years. Just show up with your dog. Mm -hmm. And they're like, what? Yep. <laughs> no one <laughs> take that. I like, no one wanted like that. Doing this. Yeah. It's like, I yeah. like doing this and there's no risk at all <laughs> yeah so uh, i mean it's it's the most rewarding fun yeah absolutely job thing anything that i've ever done in my entire life like by far oh yeah i couldn't Same be here. happier doing what i do Same couldn't here. be happier I've, I've i've had a couple of different careers in my life and uh this is by far <laughs> yeah, the by far the most satisfying um mm -hmm. You're changing yeah, I mean, people's lives for the better. Yeah, hundred percent. And I mean, that's the thing is like, even if you don't want to be a professional trainer, I know that, like you said, you have a lot of uh, average pet owners who are watching this. Yeah. You know, even if you don't want to be a dog trainer, trust me, start working your dog and you will have so much fun. You'll probably get addicted to training your dog. Oh yeah. Once Most you people realize do. what yeah. they are capable of, like you can't stop. <laughs> so this is something I tell people that you'll agree with. Um, once you start training your dog and really learning how to train your dog and working on it, your relationship you will have with your dog, like you cannot explain this to people. It's something you have to experience. I, I thought I had great relationships with my dogs in the past. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. I, you can't put it into words. You really can. I mean, yeah. it's, and like, and honestly, I know not every trainer out there will agree with this, but I definitely think that your relationship with your dog is the most important part of training. 100%. By I, far. Yes. Your relationship with your dog, especially in a, 
you know, especially like a client dog, just a dog that you're working, not even your own dog. If you don't have a relationship with that dog or that your relationship with that dog sucks, like that dog is legitimately going to be working for food and to avoid punishment, but they're not really going to enjoy it. Like if you were one of my dogs, they're like, oh my God, dude, like, well, I will do anything you want. Please let's do it. I love training. Like, let's do whatever you want to do. Yeah. Mine too. I mean, that's how, when you have a good relationship yeah. and you work your dog like that, I mean, there's nothing that matches it. Like you said, you really have to experience it. Yeah. Vast majority, uh, 99.9% of my clients' dogs, when they see me, they're like, I love that guy. <laughs> But I did tell Will, I did have one dog that I told their owner when they got him, I'm like, your dog hates me. Like, we just didn't click. I don't know why we didn't click. Um, I tried, but literally their dog did not care about me. And it killed me inside a little bit. <laughs> Next time we see each other in person, we're talking more about that dog. <laughs> okay, cool. We're going we're gonna to figure out why. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, all right, man. Well, we'll wrap this up. If you got right, anything bro. else to add, it was great having you on. And I mean, I really, I really appreciate you having me on. And yeah. to all of your clients or potential future clients, you could not do better than to work with Chase. He is a oh, thanks, great man. dude, one of the nicest people I've ever met, is 100% in it to help the dog and help Absolutely. your relationship. 1000 percent like thanks man seriously like i cannot speak highly enough of you because of the conversations we've had when we've been together like i can yeah. you know i can tell that we're very much on the same wave same wavelength in that for sure and that really at the end of the day you're just trying to help like yeah. every dog and person that you can and if your trainer isn't trying to do that for you like you have the wrong trainer straight up. i i believe so as well so as well unfortunately but, there are those people out there that they don't care they just want to make a buck and they can care less about the dog or the person um they basically become they become like I, robotic they're just yeah. trying to turn out dogs yeah, yeah. you know yeah i'm not i'm not sorry about I'm, that i got better things to do with my life <laughs> so yeah exactly <laughs> like and if you get into that robotic thing, like, why did you even become a dog yeah, right. trainer? Like, yeah. just go get yourself yeah. a desk job that pays really well because you clearly don't care. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, all right, man. Well, we'll all right, buddy. Later. See ya. All right, man. Have a good one, buddy. You too.